Hi, this is Francisco Pujar Vidal with FBI Quality. Today I wanted to speak about the notion of zero defects and how to get to zero defects that also matters. Zero defects seems like a very high, very lofty goal and for many companies that is the first good step. Zero defects is uh, what many companies would aspire to in terms of having you know, perfect fulfillment of an order, satisfaction of customers, uh, a, a, a well-made product that meets specifications that meet the requirements of customers. However, how zero defects is achieved also matters because there are a number of intrinsic costs associated with uh, reaching this goal. Let's explore the first way to reach in zero defects. I'm going to draw here a process map, very simple description of a process map with a number of steps going from left to right. So we could think about one step where or, or one process rather made by you know step one and then step two and then on and on and on a number of steps one way to ensure that there is no bad product coming out of this would be to insert an inspection point at the end which is what we traditionally would call quality control and then make sure that if things are good they go and if they aren't they don't that could be expressed in this way there will be some sort of a test over here. We typically express these things using a decision diamond. And then if the test is passed, if you, you get a yes over here, then you ship, and this is what you want it to do. This is a positive. And if it's a, a no, then obviously at this point, there's probably not good product to ship, and you, the only recourse that you have is just to scrap the product. This is what is traditionally known as quality control. It is a pretty old way of looking at quality. It is 19th century, based on 19th century theory, and it is uh, really um, better than not doing anything, but it's really not so good. Over the years, there have been some developments that say, why are we inspecting at the end? Why don't we inspect earlier, earlier in the process? So that maybe we can catch things um, uh, early on and some of this scrap may be avoided. The idea is to contain the defects and stop the propagation of these defects. How this would look like is as follows. Now you will have a process, just like we had before, step number one over here. But before you move on to the next one, then you will actually have an inspection point at this, at, this, at this moment. And so this test will happen over here. Again, there will be two possible uh, ways. Either you pass the test, and now in this case, you will then proceed on to the second step. Or if not, maybe because this has been caught early, there's no the risk of scrapping the product or there's not a total loss. Rather, there would be the possibility of making things good again through some rework. This is in the case where you do not pass the test. The second, after the second step, this would be continued. And then again, you will have another step, another test. And the same logic applies. If it's yes, it goes and keeps going. And as expected, there would be, through this sequence of multiple tests, there would be no uh, bad product uh, reaching the customers. And everything that needs to be fixing would be fixed at this point through different type cycles of rework. This is known generally as quality assurance. And it is something that was developed in the middle of the 20th century. But these two ways of getting to zero defects are problematic. In fact, I will refer you to a video that I have published early on called The Five Hidden Costs of Poor Quality. But in addition to what's in that video, think about the following. These methods are intrinsically flawed. And the reason is because they are reactive. That is, at every time we're looking at quality, 
from the standpoint of the thing that was produced, that is, the outcome of steps one, two, three, and as many as you may have, is tested at the end. And what you're testing is the product. You're testing the end experience. And it is positive or negative. You pass the test or you don't pass the test. Similarly here, only that it happens early on in the process. After step number one, you look at the product, you look at the output from this process, and then the, the product is tested. It either passes the, the test or it doesn't pass the test, and so on and so forth at every step. So what happens is that you are really um, caught in a continual cycle of inspection and rework in the better of the cases, which we already said this is really is not so good. At least this is a better uh, evolution of the early way of looking at quality. But even this one is deeply flawed because it's only looking at the product itself. And so you're in a continual cycle of inspection and rework, which means is that the defects will continue to be produced all the time because you are looking at the product. You're not looking at the root cause or at the reason why you had defective products to begin with. Wouldn't it be better to try to find a way so that you can avoid defects for good? The way to do it would be to fix the process that made a poor product or service. In another video, we will see that even trying to get to zero defects is not good enough. Thank you for your time.